Welcome to my budget deck channel where I usually try to make decks as cheap and playable as possible. So if this is something you'd be interested in, then why not subscribe? But today there's a new festival. It is Dark Against Light. And this is obviously the video for the best team, Team Dark. And I will make a light video as well, but uh, check my channel out if you want to be seeing this. But we all know Dark is the way to go because Dark has lots of different decks at your disposal. Just because I feel like Dark decks have always received more support. Started out in the early days with the Lure of Darkness in that pack and uh, continued till this day. And obviously it wouldn't be a festival uh, video if I didn't include Labyrinth in here somehow and since the new support uh, is out and the restrictions actually help us somewhat because the budget deck wasn't too far away from it. We have certain issues but we'll go through the cards real quick. Triple this, triple that. We cannot use Cuckoo Clock because that one is banned for this event interestingly enough. We have triple Ariana in here because this card can assert some stuff which we desperately need. We have one Kaiju in here because at these festivals you never know if you at one point need some removal that uh, is not immune to uh, targeting or uh, destruction so we have the Kaiju in here. We have one Arkvin in here just because uh, we have to make up some slots that we usually would be playing. Uh, Lady Labyrinth, the Silver Castle anyway. Then we have one lovely Labyrinth. We have this card because that's restricted to one, but we only play one anyway in a budget build. Sadly, only one perfect extravagance. I thought about playing Desires, but I felt like you have too many cards in here that you don't really want to banish, but theoretically you could be playing it. It could still be decent. You just kind of have to hold it till you get your Lady Labyrinth out and then it still might be fine. We have Labyrinth Labyrinth in here. We have a setup in here just to regain some, uh, well, some stuff at least because the good thing in a budget version is that, uh, well, you kind of need to recur things and then, then we can recur a big welcome a Labyrinth that is limited anyway. So this card even more useful in this particular festival. One Ring of Destruction, Triple Torrential Tribute, uh, Triple Compulse, Triple Lost Wind. You can obviously, if you have Impermanence, play Triple Impermanence, but this card is in here because it's free in the Master Pack bundles. So uh, yeah, I always like to include like one of these hand traps because you basically get them for free. And why wouldn't you play this if you have to obviously swap it out for some Lost Winds potentially. We have Ballista Squad in here, we have one Jelly Cannon in here, it's searchable and also it gives you some form of non-destruction removal. We have two Dogmatica Punishment in here. A card that gets significantly worse because we don't have any extra deck shenanigans that works well with this one. We have Welcome Labyrinth at two in here. Usually it would only play one in the budget build and bump this one up, but since we have no ultra rare slots now, I thought could be playing two. One is still fine because you have quite a lot of searchers, but I would still be playing two then because it is still somewhat helpful. Not as helpful as this one, but you know how it is. Two Farewell uh, Welcome Labyrinth because we do have quite a lot of fiends in here and that's what we kind of want to be getting out and in a grindy a bit slower duel maybe potentially don't know how, how good to how fast paced this festival will be this can potentially come up a bit more then i put in two arch fiends ghastly glitch in here just because of the fact that it's uh, searchable by cards like this and uh, by cards like that so i liked having the options of that one in here as well obviously there's lots of expensive trap cards that do a lot of better jobs so if you have them play them as well but i kind of like this one because uh, you can destroy one card and send one fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard which then gets those two into rotation as well so i feel like this is a nice one but obviously play any other one that you want this isn't necessary you can also play more budget ones even if you want to be running like triple ballista squad and whatnot then you can also be doing that you can see we've got lots of two offs in here just because of uh, some of them on this one at least uh, and this one is restricted to once per turn. These ones you could run more but Beliska's squad doesn't really make sense because you have to tribute a monster so you don't want to be running three of this and uh, Ghastly Glitch is mainly in here to, to make up for the slots we lost for Extravagance and this one gains you some resources while also disrupting opponents so I thought this might be a good option. Then we have the other card that potentially get for free but people don't really run these days anymore just to protect you from back row removal and we have one big labyrinth. For the extra deck it's just cards. It's honestly just dark cards that you can send to the graveyard with the punishment and uh, yeah they have high attack. You could go for like some of the 4000 attack points as well probably quite good idea for punishment but these ones are cards that you potentially could go into and usually you want to use punishment on combo pieces of your opponent anyway rather than on the field thing so it doesn't really matter but yeah that is something to keep in mind of and since we are extravagance still in this deck uh, i still want to make sure we have multiple of the usable links and exes Meh, not like that really comes up in terms of power level is this deck good for the event potentially it's not going to be bad it's not going to be yeah, absolutely terrible and if you have it anyway might as well run that version down the festival if you want to but let's see what else i've got in store for you today 
And the second one is a deck that you might know already, but if you don't, it is Predator Plants and it's more of a pure version. I have made a branded Predator Plant version on my channel so far, but the thing with it is it's, uh, well, it's not bad, but I think you have uh, no access to Lobelion and then it gets kind of difficult to go into certain combos. You can still do it, it's still playable, and if you want to uh, just try it out with one, uh, if you look at my channel, the list is still there, you just have to make some minor adjustments to it and it'll be absolutely fine, but this time might be the time to run down pure Predator plans. It's a bit of a very pure build because it's kind of meant to be able to go second as well against certain things at least. You see you have some of the cards that you might not want to be running in the most competitive version. The branded version on my channel will not be running uh, such things like this one or this one or this one, but this one is a bit specific. So we, let's go through the cards. One of this, you could run three if you want to, if you want more searchers. We have triple of this because that's a nice searcher. We have two of this just to search poly and because it's a dark monster, so this can become in somewhat helpful. We have this to spread some counters on the opponent's monsters. We have two of this. You could run three. Sometimes you do just need the normal summon, but I felt like two were f was fine in this build. If you want to make some space, you could theoretically cut one of this or could cut this and then just run uh, one of one more of the Calamio Sundu. We have a two score for Scorpio. I usually play more with like Lone Fire Blossom, but this one makes more sense here. We have two Darling Tonya Cobra. You could cut one. If you do not trust uh, the heart of the cards like me, then two is the sensible option, I'd say. But yeah, usually you kind of only need two, but you sometimes be running into the issue that you have this card in hand and then don't really know what to do with it. We have a triple edge and chain just to be uh, searching out fight for patchwork and just in general as well to be going into some dark monsters. You can cut this card down to two as well and just play another one of this makes uh, kind of the same. One spinal, one spinal whatever thing because we have multiple options of summoning this card out now and uh, spreading some counters can be helpful. Then the payoff for the counters is the searchable Androsophilum Hydra. You can even use this from the graveyard so you can repetitively get rid of some of your opponent's monsters and one Banksy Ogre mainly because you can use this uh, to special summon on top of your opponent's monster on your side of the field and if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard you can place Prada counters so that also works with certain other card effects um, because you can summon it off of or for Scorpio as well if you want to. Then we have one card that you also wouldn't really be playing at level 8 in here that is for the rank 8 engine with this card and some of the fusion monsters or potentially with Triantis so we have that going and this one can be special summoned then like I said the build kind of works for second build plus this deck also runs greedy venom so uh, yeah level 8 in your hand uh, that is searchable is also not too bad but usually you have this with Triantis anyway. Triple Bufo because this card just seems insane. Uh, Bufo plus Trant is a very, very nice uh, combo in general. We have Triple Poly in here because it's a fusion deck and we can basically go into any kind of fusion monster if we just have one Predator Plant monster uh, anyway. So Fright for Patchwork helps us with that as well. Predator Practice, very, very strong searcher. One Predator Pruning just because the grind game of this deck isn't that nice. This card is very searchable and uh, you can revive certain things from your Griever that you might need. We have Forbidden Chalice in here. Predator Prime Fusion can cut this one if you want to. Obviously, if you have good fusion stuff, then you can run that one as well. And we have Infinite Impermanence and Predator Planning in here because this card can come up sometimes. A uh, double of the level five, just because it makes more sense these days, uh, especially in the grind game. We have one Chimera of Leisure, one Drugs of Belia, one Trifo Verutum, you know, the big guy. And then we have one Greedy Venom. You can also play Starving Venom, of, of course, but I wanted to keep the stick as cheap as possible. But if you have other good fusions that you can play in here, which there are a few, then do so. Shark Fortress, uh, number five, we have the Dragluvian combo in comparison with um, these two, the Heart Earth Chaos Dragon and the normal one. Then we have Gravity Controller, Dispatch Parazi, Deco Talker and Berserker of the 10. You just have some Link options. Obviously, if you have some of those good stuff Link ones that are dark, then you can play them as well. But like I said, trying to keep it as cheap as possible. Fairly playable, not sure if this deck is going to be uh, very crazy or very good, but if you wanted to try out Predator Plants anyway, and you can mix them with Branded and turn them into a fairly decent deck actually, then this might be your chance to do so. Let's hope that works out for you, and let's see if there's some other decks in here that we can be using. Next up, a deck that I like, just playing in general, but it's a bit of a different one because we do lack certain plays here, so we have to really watch out what we're doing with it, because this can be problematic uh, in some situations, but it still works quite well, and that is 
we play vampire sprite kind of it's not that much sprite stuff in here so it's usually quite just like a small engine in here that can help you first of all start your vampire place and also uh, grind more resources uh, in general we play a triple vampire familiar to gust uh, of the black wings because if you control no cards you can special summon this card which doesn't only help you with tribute fodder for some of the bigger vampires it also helps you with going into your rank 2 monsters same with Caligo uh, claw crow just a tiny bit worse theoretically if you want to you can split them up differently and just play like the three of this and one of this uh, for example if you feel like this card does more for the vampire engine but then you obviously have the issue that if you draw two of them uh, they become kind of useless and they can just help you in general going into rank twos even if you don't have the whole uh, spite package anyway vampire retainer very very nice uh, card in the stick because it's level two it searches your spell traps and yeah do i need to say more it's a dark monster as well one sprite blue two sprite jet one sprite pixies you can cut this if you want to but this can come in handy for certain things we have a vampire ghost we have one sorcerer as well just in case you ever need it because you can send it to the graveyard but uh, shouldn't be that problematic the uh, triple samurai skull just to get some stuff in the graveyard triple shadow vampire i just bumped it up uh, in comparison to the more competitive sprite list because now we have more space in here one frawline uh, one scarlet scourge and one red baron to get rid of certain opponents things triple desire of course triple domain just because we need more, more normal summons so we can keep going into different plays sprite starter uh, sprite smashers and two double cross because double cross can help you go into some of the extra monsters because you can steal one of your opponent's monsters as well and triple domination try out two or one if you want to if you uh, don't have this deck and want to just try it out then two or one is fine but three i would say is kind of the sweet spot for the extra deck, Gin Buster, the Manipulator of Strings, Phantom Knights, we have one Gigantic Sprite, the one that gets the cards out, that one that also locks you, so watch out with that one. We have Shark Fortress, we have Pilgrim Reaper, we have Vampire Sh Sheridan, we have the Zombie Vampire in here, because theoretically you can go into it, especially with cards like Double Cross. We have Gravity Controller, we have Vampire Sucker, we have Codebreaker, we have Dispatch Parazi, the Deco Talk of the Budget Hero, we have Berserker of the Tenji, and we have Vampire Fascinator. So these are all cards that should help you grinding out some wins at least. It's more of a fun deck, but it's not as casual as it seems. It's a bit better than you think, but still not like a very, very competitive deck, especially with more of the sprite stuff missing. If you want to be playing a bit more of a competitive version of this specific deck, then there is one on my channel. I've made an updated version as well with the new sprite stuff. And that can be fairly decent. It's not like amazing meta defining, but obviously it's a lot better for a vampire deck than you might expect it to be. All right, all right, don't freak out. This is a structure deck. This is a triple black wing structure deck that you can easily get. And for 1,500 gems, first of all, a fairly decent deck with some upgrades, a very, very decent deck. But even in this specific form, you will be absolutely fine. So it's not as expensive at all. You see all these ultra rare spots, absolutely fine. Let's talk a bit about the cards. Uh, one value, we have one of the Roshi, we have tri uh, double of this one, we have uh, one of this, we have one Harmatin, we have double uh, triple Vata, we have a double Chinook. You could go for a triple as well, especially uh, considering the meta right now is probably a bit of a call that you can make yourself. We have uh, one Gale, we have one Steam, we have a triple Bora because you can special summon this as many times as you want. So this is quite nice. We have one Zephyros, we have one Ouster. You don't need to run this card, but I still feel like it's not as bad as uh, some people might make out it is. We have triple Shamal, we have triple Sudri, we have one Kunai because that can come in handy. Obviously triple Samoon, uh, one Zonda, we have a triple Wing Requital. This is a nice draw engine for this specific deck because uh, it doesn't have too many restrictions. It's a normal card and it draws you two cards. So we have that one going for us. We have triple Whirlwind in here, of course. Um, we have two Black Feather Whirlwind. We have two Icarus Attack and one Twin Shadow in here. So we can go into certain different things. For the extra deck, we have double Assault Blackwing. We have one Blackwing Armwing. Really don't need this card to put in anything else in the extra deck if you want to. We have two Borea Storm. You could run three if you want to. We have one Armor Master. We have one other uh, Chidori, the Assault Blackwing. We have triple Blackwing Dragon. We have one Blackwing Full Armor Master. And that is a card that isn't in the structure deck. It's a card that you got at one point in the game for free. If you don't have it, doesn't really matter that much. You can still play the deck the other way. This card can just sometimes be really, really annoying to deal with. And it's mainly the reason for why I suggest running certain things like uh, Kaiju's Index because well, if you play against this and it's unaffected by other card effects, then you might have a bad time getting rid of this. 
it still can run it over by battle, but uh, there's that. There's ways how it cannot be run over by battle, but this is a completely different topic. We have a double Blackwing Soul Dragon here. You could run three. You can go into three sometimes, so there's that. One Evil Swarm Nightmare, just because this is a nice cheap option that you could go into from time to time if you're not locked and uh, can annoy your opponent with it. And Sublink Monster in case you, I don't know, in case you need it. Um, sometimes that might happen. I've also made a deck profile with this deck. If you want some more in-depth uh, knowledge about this one, check out my channel for that one as well. This one I would say can has the potential at least to be doing quite well. You might want to make certain additions if you uh, go closer to the meta builds of it that don't just use the structure deck and some extra uh, rare cards, then you will probably end up with something that's very, very playable in this festival. But right now, this is definitely for 1,500 gems and some extra uh, rares, not too bad to be considering. And of course, last but not least, a deck that I always somehow managed to splash in here. You can really tell you get your money's worth out of this deck just for the festivals by themselves. We can really play them. And uh, that is Abyss Actors. I love this deck. It is so much fun. You can already tell the extra deck doesn't matter because, first of all, you don't run any cards that banish the stuff from the extra deck, so that's fine. And you don't uh, really go into anything in the extra deck either. You can obviously play whatever you want, but this deck locks you quite a bit, so usually it doesn't make too much of a difference if you run an extra deck or not anyway. We run two Kaijus just in case because this deck kind of wants to go second a bit, but obviously if you have multiple uh, infinite permanences, uh, then you want to be running them as well. We have one Funky Comedian, we have triple extras, we have triple Comic Relief, this card, insane combo if you have two of them, you can really decimate your opponent's board. We have a triple Sassy Rookie, triple Wild Hope, we have triple Curtain Razor in here, one Superstar, you kind of want to be running at least two. We have Mellow Madonna, we have uh, one Opening Ceremony, we have one Rise of the Abyss King, we have Triple Dress Rehearsal, very, very important card. Triple Dramatic one, because you could get away with just running one, but since this is like a budget version, three is about fine. We have one Playhouse that you will always be drawing in into as well. Very, very annoying. Keep with this one in mind that your monster has to be Pendulum Summoned for this effect to work, especially if you're new to this deck. This can be problematic to remember. We have a Bestainment, and then we have the cards that usually would be hand traps, but you can play like either very strong go second cards and just double down on the whole go second because Abyss Actors are kind of designed to go second. So if you want to double down on go second cards, use all of these cards here to uh, go second, and you can even cut like another Abyss Actor if you want to, like uh, cut Sassy Rookie down to two, and you'll still be fine and then run like only really good go second cards. I try to do a bit of both. These cards work going first and these cards work going second, but obviously they don't stop your opponent as much as certain other cards. So there's that if you want to be considering this. And for the extra deck, we have one Supreme Dragon uh, because I put this in here because some people might forget this card exists and this card can be really strong, especially because it's budget. And then we have these two and one uh, Deco Talker they also don't really go into, but the rest really doesn't matter. Fill in any kind of dark monsters that you have. It doesn't really matter because most of the stuff locks you into Abyss Actors anyway. All right, that's it for the day uh, for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. But most importantly, I hope you have a nice day. And also, if your team lied, boo first of all, but also check out my channel. And uh, it will be a light video that won't be as comprehensive because light decks are kind of bad in my opinion.